Welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. This week we're going to be discussing the four different types of fire risk assessments. Let's roll the intro. Firstly, Type 1 is the most common type of fire risk assessment. It's the basic fire risk assessment requirement for the purposes of satisfying the Fire Safety Order FSO. It's usually sufficient for most purpose-built blocks of flats and conversions. Type 1 is a non-destructive assessment of the common parts of the building, not the private dwellings. In general, access to these occupied areas such as flats is not expected or required unless there is a reason to believe that there may be significant health and safety issues inside. The only exception is cases where inspection of the tenant's front door forms part of the assessment. Where common parts contain false ceilings that are demountable, samples of false ceiling tiles that are readily available must be taken. At the same time, a sample of service risers can be opened if during the inspection such access is practically possible. In some occurrences, the action plan of the Type 1 may recommend one of the other types to be carried out. Recommendations of other types of FRAs should be backed up with a clear justification as to why a more intrusive inspection is required. Now we're going to move on to Type 2 fire risk assessments. Type 2 is similar to Type 1 in the sense that it only includes the common parts of the building. However, it involves the element of destructive sampling, for which a contractor will normally be required to both open up the construction and to carry out any repairs following the inspection. A Type 2 FRA may be suggested following a Type 1, however should not be recommended as standard procedure. A Type 2 fire risk assessment is usually a rarity, carried out only if there is a good reason to believe that there are serious structural flaws that need further investigation due to the risk that this could lead to breaches in the compartmentation and the spread of fire throughout the building. So moving on to Type 3 fire risk assessments. Type 3 FRAs go beyond the requirements of the law by considering the flats as well as the common parts. Areas such as means of escape, compartmentation between flats and means of fire detection are considered in all areas, including the flats. The Type 3 FRA, like the Type 1, is a non-destructive and is usually considered necessary if there may be fire risk inside the flats. Arranging a Type 3 FRA can be difficult in leaseholder flats and are more easily conducted in vacant flats or where the flat is rented rather than under leasehold ownership. Type 4 FRAs, like Type 2, include a destructive assessment, however in this case of both the common parts of the building and the flats. Type 4 FRAs are obviously more complicated than other types of assessments. As with the Type 3 assessment, access to the flats can be difficult and the destructive nature of the assessment will involve a contractor to open up and repair the damage after the inspection. Generally, Type 4 FRAs are only necessary in a very limited range of circumstances and, like the Type 2, should not be routinely recommended unless there is a strong justification following a Type 1 or Type 3 FRA. I hope this has given you a basic understanding of the four key types of fire risk assessment. If you have questions, our in-house fire risk assessors will be very glad to have a detailed chat on the topic. Just drop us a note in the comments below and have a great day.